Hey, what's up everybody? This is David again with Automotive Custom Lighting and today we're going to show you how to install our plug and play turn signal kit on the 2022 Polaris General. Now some of the tools you may need for the job is a pair of wire cutters, a ratchet, a 10 mil socket, 9 mil deep socket, sharpie, pair of pliers, a flat tip screwdriver, a Phillips tip screwdriver, T25 Torx bit, panel pop tool, a Dremel, a drill with the Phillips end, and a 15 30 seconds drill bit. Go ahead and start by removing the hood. Grab the front harness and horn. Grab the gray connector and go ahead and fish it through the firewall. Push it all the way through until you hit the black heat shrink. Go ahead and move the power wires and the horn wires over to the power block. Grab the T25 Torx bit screwdriver and go ahead and remove the gold colored screw. This is where the horn will get mounted. Go ahead and reinsert the T25 Torx bit screw. Make sure to not over tighten it as you can strip out the plastic threads. Go ahead and wire up the horn. It does not matter which color wire goes where. The last two cables is your left and right indicators. You want to go ahead and fish those wires through the rubber grommet to the under area side following the factory wiring. Once you get it routed through the top and into the bottom compartment area, the routing of the cabling is you want to put it across the top of this bracket and follow the actual headlight wiring harness and bring it across to the driver's side. Your left side is going to have your yellow tag. You come across to the passenger side. Uh, same thing, you'll have the same brace on the passenger side, uh, which is right up top. We'll run it across there. This side will have a green tag for your right side. Using the gasket that came with the lights as a template, go ahead and grab your sharpie and mark your drill and mounting holes. Now this part is up to you on where you want to mount the lights. This is the preferred area where we recommend mounting them. But it, again, it is up to you on how you want to mount these lights on the front of your machine. Using the 15 30 seconds drill bit, go ahead and drill out your holes.
Go ahead and connect the wiring to the light. You're going to notice there is a little guide key lock to make sure that you put it on only one direction. Line up those notches and go ahead and screw on the barrel connector. Repeat the same steps for the other side. Using a few zip ties, go ahead and secure all the wiring down. We like to put one around the connector and the headlight adjuster screw just to pull it away from the wheel well. Repeat the same steps on the passenger side. Go ahead and secure everything up with zip ties. Go ahead and tilt the bed back. Using the panel pop tool, go ahead and pry up the factory tail light harness. Install our T adapter. Plug the mid harness into the rear T adapter. If you have a crew, it will be a two part mid harness. If you have the two door, it will be a single harness. Route the mid harness with the factory wiring running to the center drive shaft tunnel. Now in some cases you could just remove the two rear cup holders and reach down and grab the bed harness but in this case if you're unable to do so you can remove these two plastic pop clips to pull the entire center console out. Go ahead and pull up on the center console. When you do so, there will be a cable attached to the bottom. 
do not pry too hard as you can pull those wires off which you do not want to do just slightly pull it up and set it to the side continue to route your mid harness along with the factory wiring that is running down the center drive shaft tunnel go ahead and connect the second extension piece to the mid harness Remove the two front cup holders. Remove the switch panel using a small flat tip screwdriver to slightly pry on the edge there. There is no mounting hardware holding this unit on so just go ahead and pry it off gently. Continue to route the mid harness through the center console and up through the center dash. Grab each side of the gauge cluster and go ahead and pull it towards you and up and remove the bezel cover. Now at this point you could go ahead and get the 10 millimeter socket and ratchet and remove the two 10 millimeter bolts behind the gauge cluster. Squeezing both the top and the bottom of the gauge cluster harness, go ahead and unplug it and set the cluster to the side. With the cluster removed, you can now grab the mid harness and the front harness and route them to where the lever is going to be mounted. Loosely mount the lever brackets to the lever and put it around the steering column tube. Using the supplied hardware, go ahead and tighten the lever bracket assembly to the steering column. Route the gauge cluster wiring behind the metal tube and then up around behind where the gauge cluster is. Go 
Go ahead and connect the lever assembly to the rest of the wiring harness. Make sure all connections are tight and secure. Go ahead and open up the gray connector cover. Using a small flat tip screwdriver, go ahead and remove the transparent pin keeper. You will have to pry on each side to get the cover to pop off. Go ahead and remove the two blue pin keepers in slot number six and seven. The yellow wire slides into slot number seven, which is right beside the yellow wire. The green wire will slide into slot number six. Make sure all pins is sitting flush. If so, go ahead and snap the pin retainer lock back into place. Route the yellow and green wires out with the factory wiring and go ahead and snap the gray cover back together. If you have the horn option, go ahead and route the horn switch over to your switch panel. Cut out the slot for your horn switch and then go ahead and plug the wiring into the back. Reconnect the gauge cluster back up to the factory wiring. At this point you want to go ahead and test everything to make sure everything works. Go ahead and take the power connector and connect it up to your pulse bar. Make sure that the left arrow comes on with left and the right arrow comes on with right. You also want to go ahead and make sure that both of your tail lights are functioning properly and both your left and right are in the right order. Along with the front side, you want to make sure your left and right are correct as well. Reinstall the two 10 millimeter bolts and pop the plastic cover back on the gauge cluster. The last thing you want to do is go ahead and go back over the entire kit and make sure that you secure all the wiring up nicely.
everything secured down you just want to double check and make sure everything is still functioning correctly on the kit pull out your lever make sure your hazard lights are going left turn right turn you want to turn in your key accessories on make sure the illumination light comes on and the horn works turn your key back off go ahead and put it on your left turn here make sure that your left indicator on the front is working left indicator on the dash and left indicator on the tail light the reason why I say double check all this because we have ran into a situation where players installed the tail harness backwards so when you turn your left on your right tail light was flashing and vice versa uh, at first we thought it was our kit but come to find out we found on the general and the ranger they have installed the harness wrong a few times so to fix that just remove your tail lights flip the harness around reinstall it and you'll be good That completes the installation of your kit. All you have to do now is install your hood and you're completely finished. Thank you for watching this video. If you like what you saw, make sure to drop us a comment and let us know.